Hello and welcome to you on this Trinity Sunday. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate, let us call to mind our sins. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the special prayer for Trinity Sunday. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us your servant's grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith that we may evermore be defended from all adversities. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so we sing our first hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy.
The Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Isaiah. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, and marked off the heavens with a span, enclosed the dust of the earth in a measure, and weighed the mountains in scales, and the hills in a balance? Who has directed the Spirit of the Lord, or as his counsellor has instructed him? Whom did he consult for his enlightenment, and who taught him the path of justice? Who taught him knowledge, and showed him the way of understanding? Even the nations are like a drop from a bucket, and are accounted as dust on the scales. See, he takes up the isles like fine dust. Lebanon would not provide fuel enough, nor are its animals enough for a burnt offering. All the nations are as nothing before him. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join us in our second team, Lord for the Years.
The Lord be with you and also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, well, here we are, Trinity Sunday. I had a funny feeling it would be the curate's turn to preach today. And today we turn our attention to this doctrine of our Christian faith, one of the most indescribable mysteries of our faith, and we try to use words to sum up great heavenly truths about God, and that's not always easy. For six months now, in the course of the Church's calendar, we've been remembering and celebrating the Incarnation and the redeeming works and life of Christ. We began at Advent, expectantly waiting the Incarnation and his birth, as we called, O come, O come, Emmanuel. We listened to Christ's ministry, experienced the confusion and pain of Holy Week and Good Friday, and celebrate on Easter Day. These past two weeks have been the peak of these past six months. Christ's Ascension and Pentecost last week. All of these events focus on Jesus, but there are three people involved in the story of salvation. God, Christ and the Holy Spirit. If we listen carefully to the Bible readings over the past six months, then you'll see in fact all three are talked about. All three play a special role in bringing people to know God. They're identified as being three individuals, but they are the same. One doesn't exist without the other. They are three in one. God the Son acts as intercessor for us with God the Father. And it's through Christ's grace that we're able to stand before God the Father is justified. It's through the Holy Spirit that this grace is applied into our lives. Yet these three the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit are one. Our first hymn this morning was Holy, Holy, Holy. This was written by John Dykes as he expresses his love for God quite openly. He reflects on God's creativity which reflects God's love for the world. Trinity is how God is. Holy, glorious, creative, beautiful, life-giving, Theologians talk of perichoresis, which comes from the words for around or make room for or dance to explain God's Trinitarian life. The Trinity is one of the hardest things to explain and understand in Christian doctrine, despite the fact we recite the Creed every week. But the one thing we can say and do is to praise God even when we don't fully understand him. The church right from the start was a new creation of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit appears throughout the Old Testament as the life-giving energy of a personal God. The Spirit is mostly active as a creative and recreative power and as an unpredictable, mysterious holy gift to God's servants and prophets. And then there's a new outburst of the Spirit in the life and ministry of Jesus. The Spirit empowered, inspired and filled him. And after his resurrection, Jesus then presents the Spirit to his disciples and the world. The church becomes the location for the Spirit, not as a doctrine, but as an experienced reality. 
The church conveys this sharing in the spirit as a shared means of grace and a social reality where God as spirit is best found and known. Pentecost is the spirit creating this very community. So from this point forward, the spirit of Christ can no longer be seen as an impersonal power. It's this experience that eventually drove the church to a Trinitarian affirmation, which included the Holy Spirit as a person equal to the Father and the Son. No aspect of the church's work and a Christian self-identity or awareness is thought of as without the Spirit, which is essential to faith and grace, preaching and prayer, baptism and Eucharist, conversion and sanctification, mission and ministry and Christian life in general. But I like to think of Trinity Sunday as God's invitation to us to dance. No matter what words you use to explain the Trinity, they can't express it fully. The mystery of the Trinity is complex, totally beyond our understanding, but at the very core, it's something like God in us through Christ and the Holy Spirit. All three inspire and urge us to dance and enjoy the relationship and grace given to us so freely. Last week, Pentecost, we heard about the Holy Spirit being outpoured on the disciples. This didn't change the people they were before, and today we see them given a huge task by Christ. After everything they've been through over the past two months, it's easy to relate to how they might feel, because they're probably unsure about how they feel. They're confused, doubtful, and yet still wanting to worship him. His closest friends gathered around him were unprepared to have what it seems on the face of it, an impossible commission given to them. They hadn't learned everything from Jesus yet, had they? The eleven were thrown into what Paul, at the end of his letter to the Corinthians we also heard this morning, describe as the grace, love and communion of God. This grace has down-to-earth implications for them and for us. Paul tells them to put their disordered church right, to agree and live peacefully as people who trust the God we confess. In a strange way, reading about the struggling church in Corinth and the struggles of those first disciples given their charge should give us some comfort and strength as we move forward during these coming weeks and months because inevitably there will be times when we feel as they did. No matter how long we've been a Christian, there are times when we feel lost and helpless, feeling like we don't quite know which way to go. The past three months have been a struggle for all of us across the world and closer to home. We have a faith in God, but then things shake it, test it, making us think about things differently. And it's not necessarily about losing our faith in God, but about thinking where God is in all of this. It's also about just thinking, who does God want me to be as a Christian in the middle of all of this? And we might feel ourselves challenged and nudged by God to look at ourselves, to rethink our ideas and assumptions. In other words, being called to change. That's what he called those disciples to do. And that's what he calls us to do. Even though we don't always feel we've got it quite sorted ourselves. Just as those disciples were left to undertake this huge task on their own, and the Corinthians, as they struggled to work out how to live this new life, they didn't have all the answers, just like us today. And despite all of this, their questions and their failures, God still used them. Today we are reminded that even though we sometimes don't feel like the finished article, even though there are things we're trying to figure out about being one of Jesus' followers, or the meaning of the Trinity, that's more than okay. God can still use us to do amazing things. He still calls us to take part in his Trinitarian dance, supported and united together forever by the grace of the Holy Spirit that dwells in us. 
Amen. Let us affirm and declare our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. On this Trinity Sunday, we pray. We praise you, God the Creator, giving us richly all things to enjoy. We praise you, Christ the Saviour of the world, made flesh to set us free. We praise you, Spirit of truth and love, willing to dwell in us, three persons in one God. We pray for the Church. May the mystery of the Trinity be unfolded in our life together, that we may be enfolded in your one love. May the Church reflect the unity which is your will and your gift. Enable our leaders to serve the unity of your people and give us through them a vision of your wider purposes. Give each of us a true sense of our vocation, that in obedience to you, we may go where you need us work for you and speak for you, so that in our lives the world may see your love in action. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Spirit of God, you are the breath of creation, the wind of change that blows through our lives, opening us up to new dreams and new hopes, new life in Jesus Christ. Forgive us for our closed minds, which barricade themselves against new ideas, preferring the past to what you might want to do through us tomorrow. Forgive us for our closed eyes, which fail to see the needs of your world, blind to opportunities of service and love. Forgive us for our closed hands, which clutch our gifts and our wealth for our own use alone. Forgive us for our closed hearts, which limit our affections to ourselves and our own. Spirit of new life, forgive us and break down the, wall, the prison walls of our selfishness, that we might be open to your love and open for the service of your world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our creator, you have taught us that the world is yours and those who live in it. Hear us as we pray for the life of the world that every nation may seek the way that leads to peace, that human rights and freedom may everywhere be respected, that earth's resources may be ungrudgingly shared among all. We pray for those caught up in conflict and violence, at this time in the United States, in Hong Kong and elsewhere. Speak to all people of your love and mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the power of God, the Holy Trinity, in the communities to which we belong. We thank you, God, for those whose work sustains our nation and the communities in which we live, for all who create the wealth by which we trade, for those who grow and provide our food, or who in industry, commerce and transport bring it to us. We pray especially for those whose daily work has been suspended at this time and who fear for their future. We thank you for those who, day and night, maintain the public services, for the police, for those who respond to emergencies, and for all whose work is in health, healing or social services, especially at this time of increased demand and risk. Help us to remember that all our lives depend upon the work of many minds and hands, and enable us to live thankfully 
and in unity as members of the one human family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring before you, O God, those who are ill and those who care for them, the unhappy and those who comfort them, all who are undergoing surgery or painful treatment, and all who have no one to turn to. We remember those who have died in faith and will now see you face to face, those for whom death speaks of fear or annihilation, and those who are unprepared to meet you. We remember all those known to us at this time. Comfort and sustain all those who mourn for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, we commend ourselves, one another and all creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we come to the peace. Peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father. Peace from his Son, Jesus Christ, who is our peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit, the life giver. The peace of the Tribune God be always with you. And also with you. God of all goodness and grace, Receive the gifts we offer, and grant that our whole life may give you glory and praise, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks unto it. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation, in your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You, you embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we, give. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise, and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. 
Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. body of Christ. The blood of Christ. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. not able to receive the body and blood of Christ in our homes, but again we have a moment's silence and think of his presence with us now, his loving, healing power to redeem and to save us and the whole creation. We sing our final hymn, Go Forth and Tell.
Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, you have revealed yourself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and live and reign in the perfect unity of love. Hold us firm in this faith, that we may know you in all your ways, and evermore rejoice in your eternal glory, who are three persons, yet one God, now and forever. Amen. Together we pray, we thank you, Lord, that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet prepared for all peoples. Amen. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.